Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so I watched a Robert Breaker video last night on Philemon, and I'd like to go through a lot of his different videos, Brian Denlinger's videos, and watch them and critique them, uh, see what kind of crazy stuff they come up with and point it out. And I mean, it's something I've been doing all along, but I want to do it more and more. But uh, so last night, I watched another one of Robert Breaker's, and I figured Philemon, it's just, you know, it's a. Uh, basically like a one chapter epistle so it's <clears throat> pretty small but um about five minutes into the video he says that the epistles are in prophetic order and uh he said that he read a book how to explain the bible or something like that uh that um, teaches this and he said it's a good book and I'm guessing that he's talking about how to teach the Bible by Peter Ruckman. I could be wrong, but just because he's a Ruckmanite, uh, that wouldn't be a big surprise. But you see here on his chart, he, he wrote them down, uh, how he says they're in prophetic order. He says uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are part of the Old Testament, and then Acts, he says, is a transitional book, and he says Romans and Titus or, you know, for the church age, and then Philemon has to deal with the rapture, he says. And then he says, the book of Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, has to do with the seven-year tribulation. And uh, Jude and Revelation basically have to do with the millennial kingdom. Uh, but anyways, this is nonsense, and this is... You know, I'm not a futurist, I'll have to restate that a lot, but I don't believe in the rapture, I believe in the resurrection, that's what the Bible teaches, I don't believe in a millennial kingdom or a seven year tribulation period, a lot of stuff that goes along with that school of thought that also has to deal with dispensationalism, it's all kind of intertwined, but this is, you know, dispensationalism and futurism at its worst. Is when with Peter Ruckman, you know, you've got Schofield who popularized uh, both of those, and then you got you know more extreme when it comes to Peter Ruckman, and he says about seven minutes in that Philemon matches up with the Rapture, and he says that Titus two thirteen speaks of the Rapture, which. Yeah, I'll go to that, but it's, let's see, Titus 2.13, Titus 2.13, he says, speaks of the rapture, it says, looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of that great God, our Savior, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and I want to show you if I can, I don't know if it'll show up, but this is my main Bible that I've used, and I've highlighted a lot of things and stuff, and um, you'll see, I even have that passage circled in a, like a light blue highlighter because I went through and circled all the rapture passages because I used to believe in futurism and I used to believe in dispensationalism and uh, so I noted a lot of that stuff in the Bible but uh, the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ all that means is, you know, our hope of the resurrection, our hope of being with the Lord, which happens when we die, okay? Uh, just like, uh, you know, Paul was looking forward to being with the Lord, okay? Just like the Lord appeared to, uh, what was it, Philip, who was, who was stoned to death in the book of Acts? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway... You know, it has to do with the resurrection. It has nothing to do with this false rapture idea. Um, you know, that has to be added into the text. It doesn't say anything about the rapture there. Um, but Jesus spoke of the resurrection. We know the Bible talks about the resurrection. Uh, and I was thinking earlier today, you know, as far as the rapture goes, that people think that there's going to be a group of people that will escape death somehow and be raptured up, but even our own Lord Jesus Christ faced death, 
okay, in, in his humanity, he died. And, you know, he didn't escape death. Nobody's going to escape death. You know, the book of Hebrews says that it's appointed for man once to die, and then the judgment. And so we're all going to have to face death. There is no rapture. Uh, there's only the resurrection. Looking for that blessed hope. You know, the hope is being with the Lord in, in, in eternity in heaven. <clears throat> and it's the promise uh, in the hope for all believers. But anyways, let's continue here because 11 minutes into his video, he says that the King James uh, writers put the books in prophetic order on purpose. So he says that, you know, these books are written in a prophetic order because the King James writers, the people who put the book together, were premillennialists and they were pre-tribulationists. And so they did this, uh, you know, without consequence or without, you know, they did it on purpose. But I just did a qu quick Google search, you know, why are, uh, you know, why are the books of the Bible in the order that they're in? And it comes to grace to you, you know, the ministry of uh, John MacArthur. It doesn't really matter, but um, I'd say that I agree with him on this. He talks about, you know, the Old Testament. He talks about the New Testament. And I'll go down and read what is said here. Uh, it says the early church was grouped. The early church always grouped the Gospels with Mark, Matthew first, followed by Mark, Luke, or Luke, then the Gospel of John. It also arranged the Pauline epistles in two categories. First, the epistles to the churches, then the personal letters. And then it typically arranged those epistles according to their size or length. The personal letters and general epistles, uh, the non-Pauline writings, appear to follow that arrangement. Hebrews first, followed by the writings of James, John, or Peter, John, and Jude. Um, so usually, you know, the larger epistles first, and then the smaller ones. The Paul, Pauline ones first, and then the non-Pauline ones, uh, generally. So these books are grouped in a way that the early church group, or the early church grouped them, and these are the reasons why. Okay, uh, Pauline first, and and then you know the, the the longer ones before the smaller ones. It has nothing to do with this supposed prophetic order that um, Robert Breaker is trying to teach here. And that probably comes straight from the mouth of Peter Ruckman. And so that's foolishness. That's nonsense. So, about 16 minutes into the video, he says, 1 Timothy 6, 2 is discussing slavery. Uh, he, oops, no. I mean, hit <laughs> the So he, um, says that Philemon has, has all to do with slavery, and that's what he spends a lot of this video talking about. He goes to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 2. Uh, let's see. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 2 says, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, Partakers of the benefit. They that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved. Partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Okay. And so Robert Baker says, when he gets to the benefit part, it says that, they're partakers of the benefit. Robert Breaker says there's a benefit in being a slave. There's a benefit in being a slave. So that's how he interprets that. Um, but the benefit has to do with the gospel. And this is talking about believing masters. So verse 2 it says, And they, the servants that have believing masters, let not them, the servants, or let them, the servants, not despise them, the believing masters, because they are brethren, 
but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit they are because they are believing they are also partakers of the gospel okay of the christian religion and so that is what it's speaking of the benefit is the gospel the christian religion and it's talking about how the masters are a part of that robert breaker says there's a benefit in being a slave so i think he totally misunderstands what's being said in this passage um and you know i looked up uh on study light i just went to commentaries i looked at albert barnes and uh, this is what he says also so i'll look at that uh if I can get this to load here. Uh, why isn't it working? Well, either way, let me see here. This is the wrong. Come on. Let me try to open a new page. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Sometimes the study light website's down. Maybe it has something to do with my internet or computer right now, but it's not wanting to load. It doesn't matter. But if you look at uh, Albert Barnes, you can read what he says about 1 Timothy 6.2. So Robert Rager says the benefit means that there's a benefit in being a slave. But what it's really saying is that the believing masters are, you know, partakers of the gospel and, uh, and so that the, the servants should not despise them, they should serve them, because they're brethren. And we go back to the verse 1, which says, Let as many servants are, in, are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And uh, Robert Breaker also talks about 1 Timothy 6.2, about 26 minutes into his video, he also restates what he, what he said. But in verse 1, he says that the doctrine, his doctrine, is the doctrine of slavery. Okay, he also talks about that about 23 minutes into the video. And, but when I looked at Albert Barnes, he says that the doctrine is basically the Christian religion. And so, let as many servants are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine, and basically, you know, the, the whole Christian religion be not blasphemed, okay? That the faith be not blasphemed. But Robert Breaker says that the doctrine is speaking of his doctrine of slavery, which, again, he misses the point, the interpretation of this verse, uh, and so Robert Breaker's interpretations of, you know, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it's not like heretical, but it's just that he he's missing the point of these, these verses. He's, uh, or he's, you know, he's just, he's misinterpreting it and he's just, he's fumbling a little there, but the whole thing with the, the epistles being in prophetic order is complete nonsense that's just nuttiness and uh saying that the king james writers did that on purpose you know it's not true and besides that you know he spent about 35 minutes just talking about slavery and stuff in this like hour 15 long, minute long video before he actually starts going verse through verse once he goes verse through verse, he does it kind of quickly, and he doesn't go a lot of deep into it, but there's nothing really wrong with it. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of weirdness there, but 
for the most part, I mean, there's not a lot that I disagree with there. So, uh, not a lot of huge errors in this one, but some a couple notable things I thought there. Uh, but I'd like to look through more of them. So, thank you guys. God bless.